The player that's been the biggest surprise on the Miami Hurricanes so far in fall camp happens to play an important position of need. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, if there is such a thing. I am Alex Dono, University of Miami alumnus, co-host of Locked on ACC and writer for allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much to the everydayers for making Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. On this Monday episode of Locked On Canes, we're going to discuss which position group is going to be the strength of the Miami Hurricanes team this year. We're going to talk about Miami's recruiting wins over the past week, including, thank you, a win over Florida State that a week ago people thought Miami would not win, but... I want to talk about the biggest singular surprise so far in Miami Hurricanes fall camp. And to help us with that, we've got South Florida sports analyst Gio Milian with us. So, Gio, uh, if I were to ask you which player, if we had to single out one to start things off, has been the biggest surprise of camp, who is that for you? I think it's a very critical position, especially when you lose two guys to the NFL and James Williams and Cameron Kinchin. Speaking about that safety spot, Markeith Williams has had a very, very good fall camp. Actually uh, leads the team in interceptions, uh, a mixture between first team, second team stuff there with, with those interceptions, but he's been getting some work with the first team too. I, I think it's phenomenal that he has really stepped up to the plate in fall camp, especially heading into this season. It's his third year here at Miami. I'm hearing things are starting to really click for him. The light's really starting to come on. I always try to remind people, don't write these kids off. I have a rule of thumb. I think it takes three years to truly determine what a player can be at the collegiate level. Man, and and, and the thing about Markeith, you know, I, uh, the last time I saw him in person was like two weeks ago. It, it, it looks like he is getting a little bit bigger. I know he's someone that the fans have looked at. He's very tall. He's in like the 6'4 range, but... He, he's always been he's always been a little skinny like he hasn't carried that much size it looks to me like he's getting bigger which is going to make fans feel good yeah uh, he's put on some size now um he's really twitchy in in, in yeah. terms of the type of athlete that he is actually i know this uh, for a fact uh during one of the practices actually more so specifically that that night practice where josh paid and a couple of the of the other national guys came out there to watch miami's practice Markeith had a diving interception that really opened up people's eyes during that practice. I, I can't get too much into the detail of exactly how it happened, but a lot of people were really impressed. But he, he is that one guy that comes up right away in, in terms of someone that's really stepped up in fall camp. You could toss some other names out there too, like your Chris Johnsons of the world and a couple other guys, but Markeith is the one that really sticks out because Miami needs – that help at the safety spot. Yeah, and and uh, as far as the defensive secondary goes, um, I'm also pretty encouraged with the development of Jaden Harris. Yeah, I think we're all we're all very excited about what Zaquan Patterson is going to be at Miami, maybe as soon as this season, getting some work in. You know, you had Mish Powell who transferred in from Washington, who can really play all over that defensive backfield. Can also get some time at nickel. Do you see more of a nickel role for Powell this year, or what kind of a role do you envision him playing? Well, this is what I know coming out of camp. Uh, he's played a lot of safety for the most part. Uh, very different from the spring where he was more exclusively a nickel. Uh, Damari Brown missed some time back then. Now, a lot more safety. Uh, situationally, though, situationally, he's played some nickel. I know two main guys playing at nickel right now, your likely starter being Damari Brown. But also, uh, Daryl Porter Jr. is getting some reps there at the nickel spot, too. So, they, they got some guys that that they they can get the job done. 
Yeah, all right. So, but good words there about uh, redshirt sophomore Markeith Williams, who's really been stepping up in fall practice. And I, I want to circle back to another name you mentioned, Chris Johnson. Now, for yeah. those for those who have caught what was an, an excellent third episode of the Canes Camp YouTube series, you know, they gave us some of the sights and sounds of that second Miami scrimmage this past Saturday. And we got a couple of Chris Johnson highlights in there and also a moment with Inez Cooper on the offensive line who started talking about CJ. It's like, you only need to give this guy one hole. Like he's got so much speed. You only need to give this guy one hole and he's going to take it the rest of the way. And I, I think this is a name that uh, I'm not going to say we never talk about CJ because we talk about him a lot, but he doesn't get talked about the same way as Damian Martinez, who also had a tremendous scrimmage. He scored a, a long touchdown. You know, Mark Fletcher, who's coming back off of injury. And then I, I think Chris, sometimes his name doesn't get brought up as much as a, of those other guys. But this dude, I mean, Gio, he's, he's a record-setting bona fide track star, and we're going to get opportunities to see him toting the rock more this year. Yeah, with, with CJ, with Chris Johnson Jr., the biggest thing that stands out, 10.2. 100 meter yard dash coming out of high school, his senior year, uh, maybe even potentially faster now because these guys continue to progress over the years. And uh, by the way, Miami fans, I, I just this is a little recruiting note here. Miami has a type at running back. Yeah. He's not going to be the last electric athlete that you're going to see coming in here into that building in Coral Gables on Green Tree practice fields. That is fast and electric he won't be the only one miami's got another on the way in gerard pringle but but with cj though his progression from the spring to now i mean just wow it, I, I i'm amazed he made some plays in the spring but he's really grasped it now that the light has truly come on he's in a really tight competition with aj allen even jordan lyle's coming on really strong like this past week and a half or so yeah getting a lot more reps with the ones, too. All those guys are fiercely competing. And then you also have the, the situation that Mark Fletcher, um, from what I'm hearing, very positively trending up in terms of his return to the field. I don't know if it'll be game one. We'll see. But I'm hearing a lot of good things. I just can't get too deep into it. I, I feel kind of bad for Florida because it's like they're not going to have enough running backs on August 31st, and Miami's going to have like five extra guys. Like <laughs> if Cristobal had any sense of philanthropy, he would like he would loan Billy Napier one of his running backs for a game. Otherwise, it's not going to be a fair fight. Yeah, yeah, no, I I, I totally agree with you. Um, <laughs> there's other guys I could point out that have really stood out in fall camp, but those are the two names that have have really taken that next step when you when you make the comparison from spring till now they have truly made a jump and and i think they're going to really help miami this year and, and i love that you mentioned Jaden harris because there's been this little narrative going on around recently with some Kane fans saying well uh oh I, I see him getting burned in these practice clips Kane fans let me remind you let me remind you all these are very small concentrated portions of of yeah. camp or practice or scrimmages that are being put out on these videos it's not the entire picture i've actually heard he's been really good in terms of against the run uh at least through camp yeah no no same and, and especially like so, sometimes you may be watching the same clip from a different angle you're like oh he got burned again it's like you know you don't always know what you're watching with these things but folks we have a lot more to get to on this episode of locked on canes whenever geo million stops by he always brings the knowledge he always brings the nuggets and yeah miami at the end of the week had a feel-good recruiting win because anytime you're going head-to-head -head against that school up north and you come away with your hat, and in this case, also your jersey being put on and not that Florida State Seminoles jersey should make every Miami Hurricanes fan feel good. So how did that uh, all transpire uh, with Bryce Fitzgerald? We're going to get to that and so much more when we come back. You want to keep it locked right here, my friends. We are only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. And I know you're only getting started with FanDuel. Guys, we talk a lot here on Locked on Canes for good reason about FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you heading into football season. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet 
and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. You know what a great deal that is to get that for free for three weeks. Then, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel any time. And also, while you're on there on FanDuel, place some wagers to start the season. Miami minus 2.5 against Florida. The world is your oyster at FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. Thank you so much for making this Monday episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. For your next listen, make sure you check out Locked on ACC. Kenton Gibbs and I, we take you around the conference, uh, including game previews. Now that the season's coming back, we still talk about the lawsuits and all the conference realignment stuff. Make Locked On ACC your next list and available free wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, here on Locked On Canes, we're joined by Miami sports analyst Gio Milian. So, you know, Gio, uh, you, you you dropped uh, the nugget before the Bryce Fitzgerald commitment that he was going to be honoring uh, a Miami Hurricanes legend and then I'm, I'm watching Bryce's uh, Instagram live feed and when he announced Miami I see he's wearing a Cam Kinchins jersey which I thought was super cool so how did that whole thing and then Cam is shouting him out on on X how did that whole thing come together so his recruitment was really interesting I always thought it was really odd that uh, let me let me not ramble too much, but I'll, I'll put it right to the point. I always thought it was strange, just the Florida State buzz and the UF buzz, and considering that he's a Christopher Columbus guy, and Miami actually wants him, because there's been some Columbus guys before that Miami has passed on when Mario arrived, but this was a kid that they targeted from the onset of the cycle. They were even recruiting him since last year and previous years. Uh, wasn't always a Columbus guy. He played at uh, Belen before, before transferring to Columbus last year. But wow. I mean, his profile is just tremendous. He had like five turnovers against the Western Wildcats, which had some serious talent that have all gone power four or currently committed to power four this year in the playoffs last year. Uh, three of those being forced fumbles, two interceptions. He had 10 interceptions overall last year. But the little story, though, behind that jersey and why why I posted the Cameron Kinchins picture in the in the middle of, of the day on Saturday and people just started questioning me. I get I got I received tons of DMs. They're like, what do you mean? Uh, wh what about what's happening with Cam? Or Is whatever? he coming back? <laughs> no, I, I just stayed quiet. You know, I didn't want to completely give it away. But but yeah, you know, just like you said, Donna, you, during his announcement, uh, his birthday was actually on Friday, and then he had his announcement on, on Saturday. He put on the Cameron Kinch's jersey. I know who gave him the jersey and everything. Good buddies with the guy. Oh. Uh, there, there's a big connection there, uh, and a lot of it has to do is uh, Bryce plays for that the very similar seven-on-seven -seven football program uh, that Cameron Kinchins came out of, and guys like DJ Ivy and and Josh Jobs of the world. All, all these kids that have either gone on to the NFL or played some big time college football. Um, it's kind of, they're kind of building a brotherhood and fraternity there uh, with, with raw seven on seven, the, one of the premier seven on seven programs in the entire country. I'll put it to you this way, Dono. I think uh, Mario Cristobal and his coaching staff uh, saw some of those seven on seven clips this off season and said, wow, uh, we're going to have to recruit their entire secondary. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't blame them. And I, I was happy uh, Cristobal and company gave me a, a busy weekend of emergency episodes because I there, there was a certain website that covers the Canes that said last week, hey, we may not get a, another commit in the class. What is it? It's, it's August. And, I, and then I they about that, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, when I first saw that, well, you're you're in a couple group chats with me, Dono. And yeah. when I saw that, I said I started laughing right away. And I said, this is crazy. How How could this guy even even dare to say this? Like, there, you, there's no way you could truly believe that Miami's done with high school recruiting. No. That, uh, just a quick public service announcement. If, if you're a Kane fan and you follow recruiting very closely, they're not done. No. They are not done. Not even close to it. They're, they're going after guys that are committed to other schools. There is going to be secret visits happening during game days. I'm going to see it while I'm out there. Uh, I might be asked to, to stay quiet about a few, but get excited get excited because if miami does have a big year 
they truly can tip the scales with some of these guys. Uh, any insight you have on on further wide receiver recruiting? Because that that is a position where there's there's a couple of guys who are committed to other schools. Uh, Tyler Williams, who's committed to Georgia, had had mentioned that you know he's I guess he's keeping the door at least a little open, yeah. talking to other schools. I know Miami. He's actually the Miami lean before Georgia came into the picture. Yeah, Miami yeah, should have had him in their class. And, and Joshua Moore at Florida. I know Miami's not going to give up there. And then with Florida, who knows? Like if they if they end up having a decent season and Napier doesn't get fired, they're going to keep their class. But if if what you know could happen there does happen and that whole thing ends up imploding, then a lot of these players are going to come available. So th- those are a couple of receivers that are committed elsewhere. Miami still hasn't given up on. And then obviously Miami's not given up on Jamie French. They're in the top four ahead of August 30th. So uh, who, who, who out of that list, if anyone, should we have maybe a little bit of confidence in, uh, about the guys committed to other programs or just Jamie French, which one do you want me to start with? You, you start with Jamie French. Okay. With him. I don't think you want to be his, his, uh, commitment right now. I don't uh. think he even truly knows where he wants to finally play his college football. Yeah. Uh, even if it's not Miami on the 30th right now, I'm leaning. It's, you know, kind of a tight battle between Miami, LSU, Texas. I'm really, I, I asked people that, cause all right. So he plays for South Florida express. He's a Jacksonville kid, but he comes down here, plays with those guys. Great seven on seven program. They actually won uh, the national championship this year in seven on seven. But I, I just get the sense from speaking to people around him that I don't think his recruitment's going to be entirely done. He's one of those guys that is just, going to stretch through the season you're going to come to that december point he's going to reassess reevaluate whichever word you want to stamp on it (laughs) all of that good stuff in recruiting i i believe he's going to do that i i just don't i don't think it matters too much who he commits to in in the next let's see what uh today is august 19th uh, in the next 11 days i I don't think it really matters too much yeah yeah but the other guys you mentioned um I spoke about it in, in the spaces the other day. I actually went down just the entire board that that guys are out there for Miami. And, and I do expect it to expand more uh, with Miami doing senior film evaluations. Uh, there's always guys that may be late bloomers or, or something that they may have missed beforehand that they go after. But from those names of Florida Gators commits, because Miami's going to play them very soon. And uh the results from that game in the season, it, it could change it could change and shake up a lot of things. A couple names I'll bring up there. Ben Hanks Jr., I think of any of those guys that are committed to Florida that Miami's been really involved with, he's a guy to watch very closely. If, if Florida's season doesn't go very well, I know Miami came really close in that recruitment. He's got a lot of buddies that are committed to Miami from that – Raw 7v7 secondary. That connection is very serious. It's very real. Um, another guy I'll mention there, Joshua Moore, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Florida State and Miami both still very much involved. He actually recently visited Miami uh, before the whole dead period and whatnot. So Miami's in a good spot there. Uh, he, he said some things along the lines of, want to see how they do this season and whatnot. But you could make the argument if you're a Kane fan. Miami's actually been a, a bit better as a program uh, since Mario and Billy have both arrived at both programs, but that that's the whole debate. Uh, I want to make sure I'm not missing anyone. Uh, Vernell Brown, the third, I think yeah. is more of a, I, I don't want to say entirely a long shot. I know he had serious interest in Miami. There's just so much deep connections there. You're talking about three legacy lines in his family that have all gone to the Florida Gators. Now he's heading there. I know his father has, uh, from my understanding, what I've overheard has some involvement in terms of the NIL side things at, at UF and this and that, and whatever the truth may be there, but Miami would love to have him. I think he's probably the best slot wide receiver in the entire country. Uh, the, the tape speaks for itself, but, Miami will try, but I, I think that'll be more of a long shot type of guy. But you never know. This is recruiting. And then last one from that Florida class, I'd, I'd bring up Jalen Wiggins, mm. out of James Rickards High School in Tallahassee, Florida. It hasn't been talked about much, but 
I know there was interest between both parties. If Florida doesn't have a great season, maybe Miami tries to open up the lines of communication there too, and at a position of need at defensive tackle. So I want to I want to settle. Um, this is a good debate to have. You're happy to have it if you're a Miami fan. What's the strongest position group? Right? There's some years where you don't have to hesitate for say, oh yeah, that because there's not other contenders. But I, I think we've got. We've got a few heavyweights that can throw in here. Strongest position group on the Miami Hurricanes. Gio Milian is with us. We will discuss next right here. I want to keep it locked on this brand new episode of Locked on Canes. Folks, eBay Motors, they've got me out of so many jams when I've had issues with my vehicles. And passion, drive, and patience, that's the formula for winning championships. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and Level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time of your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Thank you so much for making this episode of Locked on Canes your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are going to have the ACC conference preview is going to be dropping on Wednesday. And folks, you can get it right here on Locked on Canes YouTube or the Locked on Canes audio feed, wherever you get your podcast. We are joined now by South Florida sports analyst Gio Milian. So, uh, Gio, you know, strongest position group on paper this year. I, I think there are some debates to be had between Miami's receiving core, which statistically can back that up. Uh, the only unit in the ACC that's got three guys who put up at least 800 receiving yards last year. You know, you add Damian Martinez to an already talented running back room. So Mario Cristobal coach team. So the offensive line, you expect it to be one of the strengths of the team this year. Uh, the defensive line, I'll, I'll talk more about that in a, in a minute. The linebacker room is nothing to be slept on. What do you think is going to be the strongest unit on the team this year? Oh, man. If I had to pick one specifically. You, you have to. It's very, very difficult, but I think the no-brainer is that defensive line because yeah. the proof of production, the the veteran level that's just within that group too, between adding guys from the portal in Tyler Barron, Elijah Alston, your Simeon Barrow, Marley Cook, CJ Clark, these are all guys that have played many games of college football. And I, I don't think people give enough credit to what – true veteran experience means that that makes a difference in those close tight games of that that you really have to learn to win as a program those guys could help you with that and then you couple that with your returning guys like Ruben Bain and, and the season that he had last year as a freshman or Akeem Mesidor who's had a great camp and I think he's kind of the forgotten man because he unfortunately he had an injury last year he, he missed majority of the season and but when he was healthy and when he was playing for Miami during Mario Cristobal's first year, he was really good. You're talking about an all-conference level player. So, yes, I would say that defensive line. And then you throw in some young pups that are really starting to emerge right now. Uh, I know Ahmad Moten, uh, he's coming into his third year in the program now. The light's really starting to turn on for him. Uh, you have Justin Scott, who was just named a preseason freshman All-American today. And two other guys. One's a second-year guy, Malik Bryant. He's had a really good week of practice. And Cole McConathy, Ruben Bain speaks the world about him. Uh, yeah. He was actually Mr. All-Alabama last year on defense coming out of high school. Many people were like, how's this guy a three-star? I've had someone at Miami uh, – very much internally with the program that has coached for over 25 years and has seen defensive linemen that have become hall of famers coach them or were first round draft picks. He told me that Cole McConathy was the gem 
of that 2024 recruiting class. So I, I just think that group is really deep. You have a nice mixture of young talent that could help in your rotation, but also your starter level guys have a vast, vast amount of experience. I, I, I truly do think that if they are not the best defensive line in the country this year, they will be one of the top two or three units just overall. Yeah, a couple months ago on this show, I interviewed pro football focus analyst and PFF college football host Dalton Wasserman, who's certainly not a Miami fan. Like he doesn't have, you know, his wagon hitch to Miami. And and I asked him about the defensive line. I didn't set him up to say it like this. He just said it that he thinks they're the best defensive line in the country. Like not not the best in the ACC, not the best Miami's had in five or six. He thinks they're the best defensive line in the country. So hopefully they can prove that on the field. Uh, we always appreciate the time here from Gio Milian, who is uh, he he is ever present. I, I don't know how you have time to do so many spaces. Like every now <laughs> and then, I'll, I'll hop into one of your spaces and listen for for ten minutes, and it's always really good stuff. But uh, do do you like plan the space times beforehand, or do you just um, kind of do those on the fly? Sometimes I plan them. I, I try to put them out about three times a week. Sometimes I'll have a pop up space just randomly people love it because it's very much an open format it and is I, know, I, I know i know you'll know exactly what i'm saying it's kind of like that old school sports radio type of feel but just a little bit of like a twist and and a difference on it just just yeah. overall but the a couple of last things i'll share here i have my launch official launch will be happening with with my website and my whole brand and own company uh, the week of Miami and Florida, it's going to be happening that week. Uh, make sure to get out there to the pregame festivities on the 30th. We're going to be out there at V's Pizza from 5 to 7 p.m. in Gainesville. I'm going to see you there. I'm coming. Yes, I'll yeah. see you there too, Dono. Uh, make sure to get your tickets. If you're a Kane fan, if you're heading to Gainesville, head out there. We got alumni coming out there right after that, right down the street at Capone's in Gainesville. It's a nice little night lounge. Uh, uh, people are going to be having some drinks, partying, dancing. I know Lamar Thomas is coming out there. We have more alumni coming, too, that we're speaking with. Uh, there's just going to be a lot going on. Oh, and, and last thing, since we have the college football season just right here, it, it starts all this weekend with week zero. If you're a big sports fan, let me tell you something. I got a guy that I met a year ago. He's actually a big Canes fan. Very, very, very big Canes fan, too. Really great sports bookie as well, actually. He's made people a lot of money. I actually work very closely with him. I've taken some of his suggestions, and I've, I've made some extra money this year that hey. I've been pretty happy about. Uh, go check out my guy, Sports uh, sports Bet Expert, on Instagram. I, I've partnered with them over time now. PJ is, is a phenomenal, great guy. He will hook you up. Uh, yeah, it, it's exciting times, Dono. I, I'm really looking forward to that. We're gonna party out in Gainesville. We're we're, we're gonna party out there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't I don't feel like I should say in public that I'm I'm excited to go to Gainesville, but just in this context, I I am excited to head out to Gainesville in about uh, eleven days. So I'll, I'll see you I'll see you out there, Gio. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. And we'll talk to every. Actually, we're gonna have another episode today, my friends. We're gonna talk with Brian Smith. We'll we'll break down Gerard Pringle's big weekend, what he's gonna bring to the Miami backfield in 2025. So we're not done today. We're gonna have another episode later on. Huge shout out to Geo. Make sure you follow him at Geo Million on X. Make sure you follow us at Locked On Canes. And we'll talk to you again later on another episode of Locked On Canes, part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day.